good things just take time. But when they eventually get to that point where it just starts going good, it just shoots to the stars. And that's really what it's all about, brother. Is you, you plant you plant plant good seeds and you're gonna get good crop up. What's up, people? Welcome to another episode of Family Man Building a Brand Podcast. I am your host, Cecil Williams. I'm here with my host, Raphael Say. And today we want to welcome Vincent Morales. Vincent originally came from the Dominican Republic and moved to the U.S. when he was nine years old. Vincent is a full-time real estate agent in Atlanta and lives with his beautiful wife and their newborn daughter and a dog called York. Well, a Yorkie called Cookie. And a very interesting fact about Vincent is that he met his wife on a popular TV show, which we will find out all about today. Welcome to the Sir. Family Man Building a Brand in, Show, Vince. Vincent. So to Let's go. Welcome, Vincent. Let's appreciate go. it. Hey, hey, I appreciate you guys letting me, let me you know, participate with y'all today on this uh, lovely day today. Of course, hopefully, yeah. hopefully we have an amazing conversation. Cool, course, cool, right. cool. So yeah, I just gave everybody a high level intro about you and what you do. Now, why don't you tell the audience a little bit more about yourself and then we'll dive in. So I'm originally from the DR. I speak fluent Spanish. I moved here. You Hit it right on the money when I was nine years old. And fun fact, I moved he, I moved to the U.S. two months after 9-11. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, wow. So I remember seeing the craziness going on. And I remember <laughs> being on the airplane and people were freaking out. And then when we finally landed, people were clapping. Like, like just, yeah. it got loud in that airplane. People were definitely happy that we landed safe, though. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. kind of like how my first... You know, you know, our first day in the U.S. That's, wow. <laughs> so the first place I lived I when I moved to the States was the Bronx. And I went to school there. Shortly after, we moved to Pennsylvania. And that was basically where I went. Middle school, high school, and college. So I moved to Atlanta in 2001. And I, you, you guys, I don't know if you guys have, were here back like 2012, but Atlanta definitely looked totally different. The demographic, the layout, it, it has definitely grown. You see new faces and like just the overall like vibe is completely different from what I remember. Um, but you know, just like anything in life, you know, changes are just going to happen and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, so when I, when I first landed in Georgia, I, you know, was not sure what I was going to do as far as career wise so i just hopped online and i was just looking for a job or whatever and landed a, a gig by selling cars and uh, i found a job at a i actually started at a, a used auto dealer like a, one of those buy here pay here joint and i wasn't there very long and then i landed a job with a ford dealership and this is something that people need to know, man. When people look at like car guys, they just think like, oh, this guy's gonna scam me away from my money, <laughs> this and that. No, 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 they're not, you know? Uh, especially if you go to those big franchise dealerships, they, there's just so much that goes into it. You're, you know, regulated by the brand, you're regulated by corporate. So as far as like people getting, you know, scammed or anything like that is very unlikely uh, when you deal with uh, like you know like a big brand or anything like that but but what i would like for people to know that it's a very very lucrative career okay the only thing that i will say the only negative is that you have to be at the dealership pretty much all day but after a while after a business is flowing and you have your repeat clientele and your referrals it gets a little bit easier as far as schedule goes, because you know when you're when when you first start, you gotta grind, grind, grind. You gotta be there on your day off sometimes. You gotta be there late. We we call it bell to bell, but it's again a very lucrative business. You know, imagine a, a guy, I mean, I grew up in the DR. You know, I, you know, I was there for when I you know coming into the US. You know, same thing. You know, I didn't have much opportunity, but the car industry definitely. You know, put me in, in a platform where I was able to make a good amount of money. So I remember being, I, I started when I was 20 years old. And then I started seeing like a comma on my paycheck. And I'm like, I have never seen that before. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So just going from being super, super like poor. And then just seeing thousands of dollars each week on my paycheck. Just, it gave me a new perspective about money and, and life in general. I was like, okay, like, man, I, I, I really could just... You know, it's possible to 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 actually you know have a good life out here too, you know, yeah. because you see like you know you see people they got it or whatever, and I'm like, how do I get to that position? So 
I, I do want young people to know, like, I feel like a lot of people think, oh, let me be a youth. Let me be an influencer. There is money there. I, I live it a little bit, right? Yeah. Uh, but there's other opportunities. And real estate is one of them. Auto sales is, is, is one of them. And, and the thing about auto sales is that you can quickly start making money. You can get in there and immediately start making money. You just got to hustle, hustle, hustle. But yeah, man, like, you know, just like, like I was saying, being so young and making so much money, you know, I started like buying the cars, spending, spending money on clothes and stuff. So a lot of just, you know, vanity, really, really just, we're just out here having a good time. I mean, I was young and, you know, I was able to help, help my family, help, you know, help loved ones with things that they needed. That's for sure. No doubt, That's man. Sure. Well, yeah, man, I, I definitely want to unpack, um, especially the, the, the digital influencer route and things of that sort, because I see, you know, you've touched on that space and you've also, we can also relate on the auto sales and we can also relate on the real estate, but. I mean, the there's a lot of, right. yeah, bro, real quick, just to say something, it's funny because as, as you were saying all these things, a lot of parallels was I moved to the States in 2001 and I was, so literally I moved to the States in about two, three months later, 9-11 happened. So for me, I was watching it on TV, not even knowing, yeah. what, I, I was like questioning what was going on because yeah. I, I'd never been to New York. So that was the first thing. And then obviously talking about Atlanta demographics, about maybe almost around that time or even I came to Atlanta and I said to myself, there's no way I'm moving to the state. Like it just is not somewhere I want to live. Cause to me it was very much like the South, the South. And yeah. then obviously talking about car sales, that's something Ralph can definitely relate to. So yeah. there's a lot of parallels in there that I just wanted to like touch exactly. on before Ralph, I, you go, but go ahead, Ralph. Yeah. I, well, well, first of all, Vince, I don't know if you know, man, but I'm a Grady baby. So when you're talking about Atlanta, I was actually born there. Yeah, I'm a Grady baby. Yeah, man, I'm a Grady baby. Was born in Atlanta. <laughs> yes, sir. Born in Atlanta, relocated to LA a day before my first birthday. So, like Cecil said, there's so many different parallels, right, man? But but I'm sure we'll be able to give the audience a more in depth look when they actually know the foundation of of like really you. So so I, I want to go back to you being the man that you are and you being that family man, you met your spouse on the reality TV show. What was that reality TV show? So the name of the show is uh, Married at First Sight. So crazy, man. I because like, I'm, a, I'm a very traditional, I'm a very traditional person. I never thought that I would, you know, go outside of my comfort and, and marry somebody on TV. But I'm also a very spiritual person as well. So my thing is things happen for a reason. I think everything happens for a reason. If something happened and it doesn't go how you want, it's because it's leading you to something else. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So that's just my, my thought process the whole time. The way it started, the whole thing, the way it started was I got a DM. And this was in, during the pandemic. So I was single all the time, whatever. I got a DM on, on social media and the lady was like, yeah, I'm a recruiter. Da -da -da -da. And would you be interested? I'm like, no, man. I didn't reply to her actually when I got the DM because they actually went to my spam folder on because you know sometimes messages go to spam, so I I ignored it and I was like, whatever. Let me see what this lady's talking about. And then she was like, you can Google me, you know. So I went ahead and just started a conversation with her. She's like, hey, let's talk. And then we had set a time to speak. We spoke for like about an hour, and she loved the vibe and how everything went. And she said, I think you'd be perfect. But the thing is, she didn't tell me what it was for exactly. She said it was for a, da a dating show. I didn't know that I was going to get you. Because <laughs> what they're doing is, is like, you know, they're not sure you're going to like, if you're going to make it. So okay. they don't want to give you too much information. They just said it was a dating show. So, and then eventually I just get, kept getting called back and stuff and getting closer and closer. They came to my apartment. And did a tour and stuff like I'm okay. I'm getting this getting you know it's getting tense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> it's getting serious. But like again, like I said, I just kept the mindset that everything that was happening was happening for a reason. And I prayed on it, prayed on it. Eventually, I got selected, and I, I did not know my wife when I married. Wow. Wait, 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 wait. So how does this? How does this? Like I know you say like they tell you it's a dating show, but. Married at first sight, do you get to see the person before no, you marry nothing, them, or do you get nothing, to commit to the marriage and then see the person? No, you meet you meet your spouse at the outer, bro. Man, oh wow! Man. Yo, you, I almost, I, swear to God, I almost, I almost fainted three times wow. because you know the man usually Crazy. walks up to the altar first. So my family's on the right side, her family's on the left side. I have no idea who these people are, yeah. but 
I don't know how I kept my composure, bro, but I almost, and then I don't remember much because that's how scared and nervous I was. Wow. I mean, I can imagine that. I mean, Ralph could probably think about it. When I got married and I, I knew every, I mean, almost everyone in, 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 in the ceremony and obviously saw my wife walking out. And it's a nerve wracking moment for most men to go through that. So I could only imagine, I mean, what, what it was like for you, but to, to not know, I mean, cause right. we watch these shows and obviously from a consumer watching the TV you think show, it's fake. Yeah. we think it's fake, but also we're only seeing what we're, what, what's edited and what we're showing. So for you coming, right. telling us like, you didn't I mean when you get there, that's the first time. Cause we're thinking, okay, maybe they met the person. At least they're just showing this to us, but wow, that, yeah. that is something well, else, man. Where did it go from there after? Like, so we, you know, we, we said yes, like, oh, I'll marry you, what have you said yes to the, can you say no? Essentially not because you know, <laughs> the problem is, is that the casting, they let go so many, they let go of so many participants and selected you. So it's like, you kind of have to go through with it. Not, not that you're being forced, yeah. but you said you'd be open. Cause they asked you like, are you open? If you're not really if, like, there's not a lot of attraction, stuff like that. Just they pair you up because of your personality traits. And because you have a lot of things, uh, a lot of things that you, you can potentially bond with okay. and they can, you know, you know, make a strong relationship with, but you know, some people, they don't are not necessarily attracted to each other. And that's one thing that usually kind of starts like up a fuss in the beginning. So you go through it, through with it, potentially, even if you're not attracted to the other person, you go through with it, potentially connecting in a different, in a different way. You see what okay. I'm saying? Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. But luckily for me, you know, we, when I was dope, I was very attracted to my wife from the beginning. Yeah. Hey man. Congratulations on that. Yeah, man. Thank you. Definitely. We're actually, kudos, we're actually going to be married for, we're going to be married for three years a month. Wow. Okay. Kudos, Congrats, man. man. Congratulations, man. No doubt. Yeah. And, and, and Seth, you know, the way I, the way I met Vince, I ran into him in Las Vegas and he was, uh, bro, believe it or not. Yes. He went through this of just meeting my wife at the altar, but he was in definite good spirits. And at that point, I think Vince, at that point, when I did meet you in Vegas, the vibe was there. It's kind of like, I knew he was going to go all the way because even when he met me, Seth, I was with my wife and, okay. you know, yeah, I was with my wife and, at that point, it wasn't like, okay, I'm single man in Las Vegas, you know, uh, and, and, and you're a married man in Las Vegas. There was a difference. It was kind of like, no, married man to married man. And let me hurry up. I got to get back to wifey. He's like, let me, I get, let me hurry up. I got to get back to wifey. So from then, says the vibe was already set. It's like, I kind of already knew Vince was going to take it all the way and Vince was going to make it happen just based off that initial feeling. And it kind of goes back to that saying, like, when you know, you know. So when you see yeah. them thriving now, I saw them from the very beginning before the public even knew what was going on and no, nah, this guy's going to take it all the way. I could tell by his spirit. I could tell by his calmness. I could tell by his demeanor. You know, again, Seth, don't get me wrong. This guy is still, quote unquote, he could still have that quote unquote single mentality. Well, yeah, because I mean, Vegas, that's a but, big step. That's yeah. a huge, like, yeah. I mean, I'm mind blown by it. So I, I really commend you. I mean, for, for, for good, because I, I, I don't know if prior to like me being married, if I would have done that. So that's, that's a major commendation to you for doing yeah, that. Brother. And like you said, three years in now, not only three years in, you built a family, you have a pretty baby girl. And I mean, you've even gotten a little pet dog and we were just talking about that and having to take the, the dog to the vet and do all these things. So what it's like, what is it like to grow the family? I mean, cause like you said, you connected with her, but what is it like to yeah, now man. grow the family? It's a beautiful thing, man. You know, a uh, little backstory about me. When I was two years old, my mother moved to the U S okay. and unfortunately due to, to like legal reasons, I was able to come with her and my, my, my mother and my father had separated. So I grew up without my parents, basically from like two up until like I was nine years old. Okay. So basically that old, like young child and parents thing wasn't, wasn't something I grew up uh, with. So, I mean, it was a big deal for me to like find a wife and settle down kids, dog. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it, it was something that, you know, I was very passionate about. I'm going to find somebody. I want to you know, settle down, yeah. have the kids, and, you know, you just continue, continue this new, new path, you know, for, yeah. for, for me. And then also inspire others. And I will tell you, I'm going to tell you what, bro, like after me, after like people that know me, 
watch the show and, and, and let's say they were in a relationship with somebody, there's at least like three or four people that got moved forward and got married. Wow. So I've also yeah. inspired other people inspiring. in my circle to make definitely. that move. Oh yeah, definitely, man. Well, I mean, events, you, you gone, you know, you know, that traditional man that had these, these goals and you, you became a reality TV star. I would say so you and your, your wife, because I, I know on that season, you guys, you know, first of all, man, my wife is the biggest fan, man. So I, I may not, I may not specifically sit there and watch, you know, marry that first sight, but I get all the news. I get everything in, you know, you and your wife are one of those couples that came from that season and are thriving. So like, I, I really, I really, I really would like to know, like, how did you transition from reality? Reality TV can, can put you on a certain mindset, the fame, the glitz, the glamour. But you seem to keep a focus on business and family, not just uh, taking advantage of the glitz, the glam and all that stuff. So how did you transition into the different ventures after the show, specifically real estate? Because that's something I'm very intrigued in. That's something I know a lot of the audience is intrigued in. How did you go from this reality TV mindset to now transitioning into bigger auto sales? You know, the, the brand that you're with, you know, I'm not sure if you could say the name on here the brand that you would, but specifically real estate as well. Yeah. So I would say that I'm a natural born hustler, man. Like since I was a young and like, I really didn't have much growing up. So what I have today is something that I built on my own. And I really can't, I don't really have a, a lot of names that I can, I, I can say that got me where I'm at right now. So really like just, you know how to say out the mud, that's literally, literally how I got here. So just being on the show, I never thought of like, you know, depending on just like, social media or TV to like make my, my money, what have you, to support myself and my family. I would tell you that my relationship with my wife, we were genuine and we was taking it like our normal co couple from the beginning. And then that's, I think that's how we were able to stick to, to this day because we were just real with each other. But I've also have been very entrepreneur, entrepreneurial minded, you know, my entire adult life. Just, you know, just from being in sales and things of that nature. Um, I, the whole uh, real estate thing came about just me wanting to, I wasn't so more interested in selling, but more in getting to get inclined on the investor side because I'm big on generational wealth. You know, like, like I've, I've mentioned a few times, you know, I really didn't have much growing up. So like for my daughter and the generation to come, I want to build a platform. And that's one, one thing that I'm big on and that I preach about. You've got to have a platform. Um, one thing that I learned from somebody that, you know, is a good friend of mine, he said that when you are the person that can fire you is yourself, you know what I'm saying? So we got to have a platform. You know, I feel like a lot of people, you know, you can make some money with, with a company here, a company there, but the, the minute they don't need you no more, you're gone, brother. And that's how it is. You're nothing but a number to a lot of people. But when you have your own platform, like I said, the only one suffering you is you. Got you. Got you. Now, now I know that I know that it's it's an adjustment having an entrepreneur in the home and having that corporate nine to five worker. Like what what you know, you know how how did you you guys are a new fresh couple and off the rip this is what it was. So how how are you, you know how did you guys mold and mesh to make that work from the very beginning? Like that could have been where it's like yo you day not like you're an entrepreneur you're always out on the streets this and that you're always out hustling. I'm not built for that, but that could have definitely been the reality. So how are you guys making this work? That's yeah. So basically, yeah, she definitely was like, nah, not that she wasn't supportive of it, but like you said, she is, she was a traditional nine to five sort of, you know, poor bread yeah. person. And, you know, just basically we just had a lot of conversation and that's one thing that you gotta, like people gotta learn to do is learn to have honest conversation with your spouse. So there's no animosity. That's just me being an entrepreneur. It's just how my life basically has molded me to be, you know, not depending on anybody and literally just grinding everything out and creating opportunities for myself. So that's just one thing that we just had a lot of conversation about. I ultimately just came to an agreement, but she was not with, she was not with it like that. In the beginning. I mean, it, it's, it's always, and it's and interesting because you guys are uh, young, so it, it's a difficult thing, but I think you, you touch on it, honest conversations. And obviously, mostly entrepreneurship tends to initially work with complementary personalities. Somebody has to hold down or somebody has a very, I guess, predicted path, which is the nine to five path. And not to say predicted in the sense that because you could get fired, like you said, at any time. 
But I think having those complementary skill sets um, definitely helps. Now, obviously, from what I've observed as well, your wife has, I mean, you guys have become digital content creators, which in itself is, is an entrepreneurial thing for the both of you guys. How do you guys, I mean, that's an intriguing world that I think almost a generation above us has absolutely no idea how it works or, or clue how it functions because um, people see people doing things online, building brands, getting all these things and they're just like, they just don't get it. So like, I want you to touch on that because initially you right. said it's not all what it's t- worked out to be, yeah, yeah. but there is, there is a formula to these things and yeah. how you guys figure it out together as a couple. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so definitely there is a lot of money to be made as a influencer. And that, that word influencer kind of just gives you like gigs. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What it yeah, is, for real. Man. I know. I know. But there is a lot of money to be made. And, you know, getting into that space, I learned that the actual content creators, like people that came up just specifically just from social media, they make more money than like the people that come from TV and from whatever movies. Well, you, you might have those superstars that obviously get millions of dollars every month. But the, the people, the people that are making the money are the actual influencers, the people that are specifically coming from a social media platform. So, you know, that was like something that I had to like learn and just be like, oh, I really, I really ain't lit like that. You know what I'm saying? Even though I was on TV, it doesn't mean nothing because, you know, these companies just want, they, they want people that can provide good you know, content and know what they're doing because you have, you, you can have a, a bunch of followers and this and that, but where's your engagement? Are people like, are people actually clicking on those links when you ask them to click on those links? Because that's what, that's what ultimately pays off the, 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 the company that's giving you thousands of dollars to put a couple of videos up on your site, on your profile. See what I'm saying? Makes sense. Makes perfect sense. Makes sense. But yeah, so that's, that's interesting. Cause I never, I mean, you're right in the sense that I think people who organically build as cons who just came up and say, this is what they I make more money versus someone coming in. I mean, because with those people, you kind of almost start following them from because my wife watches a lot of YouTube and she always says, I've been watching some of these people for the last eight, 10 years. And it, to, the, to everybody else, it looks like they just built this overnight brand. They've been doing this organically, having very few clicks when nobody else cared about them. So now when they're driving millions of traffic to a company and they're getting paid for it, it's because like, yes, like you're saying, this is what they've been doing for a long time. And they built it organically versus somebody who's coming from TV or saying, well, I have because I could be. I could like an actor because I like their movies. Doesn't mean right. if they sell me toothpaste now, I'm just like, well, where is this coming from? Right. And then also it's like, it's like, I feel like the, the people that follow, follow like influencers, like whether it's YouTube or Instagram, they almost feel like, like that person is their family because they know so much about them personally. You see what I'm saying? But somebody just coming off the rip, just from whatever love is blind or whatever. They like yeah. to the show, but they don't know nothing about this person. Okay. Okay. And for you, I mean, specifically, I think, People get to see you guys now. I mean, give them bits because I always say Instagram or social media, no matter what people say, it's still a curated platform in the sense that you get to give people a sneak peek behind the scenes of what your home and what all these things look like. So people get to actually see you. So they follow you as of like, well, I know this person like, hey, I I, I almost know what their kid's going to do if they right. do this, like, and, and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's, yeah, that's why we, me and my wife, we started calling, like, people that follow us and have been following our journey, our family. We, we don't call them fans. We don't call them okay, or, okay. what have you. We, 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 we they are family because, you know, they, they, they've been with us this whole time. Makes gotcha. sense. Well, Makes sense. Okay. Well, well that, that's perfect, Vince, because, you know, on, 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 on this podcast, you know, we have a framework and, and we've broken down this entrepreneur journey into five different phases. And I think that's the perfect segue to me getting into the foundation that you've built. You know, like you said, you've always been a hustler. And Cecil and I can say that we've been, you know, hustlers in the past, but hustling in the past wasn't the right setup the all the way through. We lost opportunities in the past because we didn't, we weren't structured up business-wise the right way, things of that sort. So now that, now that you're here, uh, first of all, I've seen you and your wife really build. You guys have built not only Instagram accounts, you guys have built YouTube. You guys have really gotten this process down packed and you're really implementing it. How did you build your organizational structure? You know, did you know about entity? Like, 
having your family, you know, operate under an entity and things of that sort? Are you there yet? Or, you know, or are you just still operating where it's just like, okay, you know, we have a YouTube, this and that will eventually get there, but it seems like it's serious now. So how did you get that structure down packed? And did you even know about that? Yeah. You know, one word that I can give you is consistency, brother. And that's, that's what builds a foundation, consistency and faith, brother. Like you really got to believe in what you're doing and your work. You know, we knew that just based off the hype from the, the show that we were going to get a following, but you still got to post. You still got to connect with your, with your fans. You got to put in that work. You got to create content. You got to make people laugh. You got to make, you got to bring people into your home. You got to like make them feel a connection, you know? So I, I think, you know, with, obviously with the help of my wife, we, we've been able to, and we, we do have a, you know, we, we do have it. We are a business, okay. so we've we've been able to monetize our, our situation because we we try to stay engaged. We try to put out content, and to be to be to be honest, man, we kind of slacked a little bit on the YouTube. I think personally, like our YouTube would have been way way bigger right now, but life happens, and then we also had a baby. You know, sometimes the personal life can take over business and. Obviously, personal life is a priority over like money and things like that. It's health, health before wealth. You feel what I'm saying? Yep. No, I mean, that's that, that's sense. what we always I mean, preach, man. Family man building the brand. You know, you know, we've spoken with multiple guests and we found that there is no balance. You know, they always people say you maintain balance and things of that sort, but it's never 50 50. You're either going to go crazy hard on the business and you're going to slack up on the family, or you're going to go crazy hard on the family. And you may slack up on the business a little bit, you know, but, but, but Vince, was there a difference? Was there a difference in your monetization being structured as a business and not as a business? Would there have been a difference? Well, this is the thing when, when you, when you do it just for fun, you're not going to get anything out of it. You see what I'm saying? But when you treat this as a nine to five or whatever, that's when you see the results. Because you're treating it like a nine to five, you're put, you're, you're you're putting your all into it. You're you're dedicating a lot of your time. People don't know. People think that people don't know the ins and outs, you know. But like actually coming up in a, with an idea for an episode and editing that takes sometimes days. You see what I'm saying? So it's a lot of work that goes into it. I would say I'm a, I'm a very I would say some somewhat like because my imagination is so crazy. I'm always like just thinking of different ideas and stuff like that. And I am gonna do a bit. I'm gonna try to do a little bit better, like actually taking these ideas and visuals that I get in my mind, and actually start putting in in paper and eventually creating content. But I think when you treat it like a job, that's when you see the results. But if you're like, oh man, we can wait until next week to post a video, that's when 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 you really won't see much growth. Okay, I mean, so just be on it, like yeah, consistency. Yeah. And it's funny because I do, for me, I, I'm seeing the consistency in, in posting things and getting opportunities that otherwise would have never come my way. So it's important that the audience gets started and then know that consistency. But you did touch on like imagination being crazy. And I, I think what it is, is most human beings, if not all have it, well, all of us have an imagination. I think a lot of us have a fear of acting on our imagination. So you come up with a crazy idea or what you think is crazy. But when you put it out there, there's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people who can relate to exactly that. Because one, you're touching on a fair point for them, something they like, oh my God, I thought about this. It's funny or whatever, but I would never, because there's a fear of them saying, putting that out and maybe ridiculing themselves. Because I think everything starts in the mind. We tell ourselves to be fearful of things simply because of what we think the consequences will be. So for you guys having built that, you guys are in a position where you guys have conquered the mind because I think social media, in, well, influencing and, and all this, this new world is a very brave thing for people to do, especially with you and your wife doing it. And obviously people will say, I'd never put my kid. Yeah, I'd never put a picture of my kid online because of all the reasons that could happen in the future. And I'm just like, but it's not happening right now. Like take the opportunity and change your life. So Kudos to that, to the, the, like you said, the consistency and, and that imagination. I do encourage people to just use their creativity. I mean, I've, I've come up with some ideas sometimes where I'm like, ah, oh, it's too crazy, but I'm like, I'm going to make it. I'm, I'm going to put it out and see what people say. So definitely that resonates. Well, think about, think about the people that have, that have made it. They went through that same, through that same mind, 
you know, mindset of like, you know, where they, they juggle whether they want to continue because yeah. they don't see any results. But they okay. get to the place, they get to the place they're at because of hardship and not giving up. You know what I'm saying? Because right. that's that's life. Yep. Makes no, sense. It definitely makes a lot of sense. sense. Makes total sense, man. Now, now, Vince, yeah, you know, there, there is a lot of a lot of capital, mental capital, financial capital that goes into building what you're building. Creating a long form video, again, it takes days. It takes editing capital. It takes all these different things that go into it. And again, when just starting out, we all know, yeah, creativity, yep. all these things are a commodity when you're first starting out. And in the beginning, if you don't have a lot of these things, it can make a break. So like what has been more instrumental to you? You have a network now that stems from TV and now is growing you know, across the real estate you know, world, the real estate sector, auto sales sector. What's more instrumental? What's been more instrumental? Your network or just the actual resources that you have at your disposal, that you and your wife have at your disposal? I will say that I can't not deny that the resources have tremendously, but I think it just goes back to that consistency. Um, I feel like I can't speak for a lot of people, but you got to use what you have. You know what I'm saying? And I think we took advantage of that momentum from the show and got to where we're at because of because we we stayed on. With it. And I will tell you that um, not just not just from the income that we have coming in from from like our regular jobs, we're able to live a pretty 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 good life. But social media, man, tell you what, brother, there's a lot of money, man, to be made. a lot of money to be made. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No wow, doubt, that's, man. That's, and 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 I I wanted to ask a question about that because just like you said, I guess how does that how does social media help you in your real estate business? Because as a real estate yeah. agent, I mean, you you have to. I mean, it's a lifestyle business because you're, you're giving people a lifestyle. How does social media or does it or how does it help you? In that? Yeah, so just you know, just posting, getting in people's ear, letting them know what I do. And you know, sometimes before posting something, I, I I might be a little hesitant, like, damn, I don't want to be annoying. But that's the thing, you gotta let people know. And, yeah. and at the end of the day, brother, like, you know, you you're feeding the family. Yeah. So you just gotta do what you gotta do. And a lot of people don't take offense to it, even though you might feel like it. People are just like, Oh, okay, this is Vincent talking about real estate again. But I've gotten a lot of referrals. And even if like I'm not in the no. state, I I'm not licensed in the yeah. state that people are uh, asking for help. I've got, I've I've found people and got them help and got a kickback. So you know what I'm saying? It just no it's about you know just not being afraid, afraid to put yourself out. No doubt, that's uh, an you, important thing for everybody oh, yeah. to listen to. Just and I, and then that, it, you know I, you gotta practice what you preach. Sometimes I say things and then I'm like, damn, like I I really should do what I'm what I'm I'm really I really should do better about practicing what I'm talking about too. Yeah, so, yeah. Not saying that I'm perfect, but those are things that I think like have helped a lot. I mean, nobody, nobody's perfect. I think I always say, well, stri like that, all these words, like striving for perfection and all these things, they, they're not a reality for, for most human beings because we can't be, but I, I just wanted to know, and I was curious. I mean, I'm, I'm going through that path. I might be way behind you, but I'm going through that where I'm seeing that, okay, this is really helpful. And, and most recently we interviewed someone who then said like, I mean, somebody had told me this thing, if they don't know you, they can't flow you. So it's more like if you if you're going through something or if you want to be someone or do something, people have to know what you're doing. And we have in today's world the platforms that allow us to tell people because before everything had to be on TV. And if you I I have never well I don't have access to becoming a TV star. I mean, and for you you had access to that, but the, the chances of that happening is a one in a million, whether we choose to accept it or not. So now we have this thing where we can just get on it and tell the world what we're doing, regardless of how many people we think are going to listen, but it lives forever. And if you're consistent, like you keep saying over time, people pay the people who me, need you pay attention. Let me tell you something, brother, like a customer of mine, when I was working for Mercedes Benz told me something so profound that it has stuck for me. Yeah. It, it has stuck with me. So you get out of life, what you plant, brother, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. If you plant bullshit, you're gonna yeah. you're gonna get bullshit. So when you plant like when you plant good things, good things come out. You might be on top of it and and, and, and you know add you know the soil and the and the water of the plant as much as possible. And it may take time and time and more time than you think 
because we all want things to just like the next day to just pop. You know what I'm saying? So good things just take time. But when they take time, when they eventually get to that point where it just starts going good, it's just shooting stars. And that's really what it's all about, brothers. Is you, you plant the, you plant plant good seeds and you're gonna get good crop, bro. Definitely, man. I love it. And it's just and it's the same thing with relationships. Yeah, it's the same thing with relationships, friends, family. You 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 pour good you you pour good to get good out. You know what I'm saying? Good. Makes sense. Makes sense. So yeah, cool. So another I mean, obviously I think we've talked about a lot of this stuff and I mean, well, I think we've come we've come to a point where we might know where to find you, but the audience, well, one, before we even get there, do you have anything upcoming that you would like the audience to know? Because it's funny, I was watching something yesterday, and I, I think it might be happening today or maybe in the future. It, may, it might have already happened, and I saw something you pushed where you're, you guys were going live on YouTube or something like that, and there was a link. And I'm like, well, I didn't know you could put a link there, and I was learning a bunch of stuff, so... I mean, do you have any upcoming things that you would yeah, like man. the audience to know that you What's and on the way? are doing or where they could find you and, and that good stuff? Yeah, so definitely my focus right now is mainly on, on YouTube. Man, people don't <laughs> know. People people be sleeping on YouTube. People yeah. sleep on YouTube, yeah. brother, but there is so much opportunity there. For sure. um, just So we went, we took a long, we took a pretty long from YouTube. But as, as soon as we started posting consistently, we're getting emails on us to pitch their product. And on top of you being monetized, yeah. you're going to get that kickback from the, yeah. that specific Definitely. company. Yeah. So that, that's the thing, brother. I'm focusing on YouTube because I see YouTube being like our main source of income in the next six. We'll you know, be that. watching. Cause like that, and the content, well, when, the content will get better. I the mean, my wife and better. I, when we watch, like she watches, she discovers and then I just follow. So yeah. I'll come in and I'll see her watching about people posting things about family, about and this. Because I always tell I'm like, everything in a house seems like you saw it on YouTube. <laughs> right, right, right. I'm, I'm, YouTube is, I, I spend so much more time on YouTube than any other app. Bro. Wow. Okay. That's wow. My, my source of entertainment. Wow, man. Sure. And do you guys have a, like a, like a joint YouTube channel or is it just like. It's what? a joint. I think once the channel grows big enough, then we're going to do our separate okay, okay. where she does what, like. What is our, it like, called right now? So for stuff, people who want to be I able to find it. Yeah. What what is it called so they can find it? Our YouTube channel is Vincent and Brianna Morales. Literally, okay, okay. perfect. Vincent okay. and we'll go out Vincent there, and Brianna Morales. Go follow their journey on you, and and so that Sorry. way you can follow them. I mean, because if in order, like you said, for you to feel for things to feel organic, people want to know exactly what's going on in you guys' lives, and that's how they become family. So yeah. That way, when you call them, hey fam, they're like, oh yeah, I'm. I'm actually talking to someone I know that I've never probably really met. So exactly. that's a pretty good stuff. But yeah, but, but yeah, we, we, we keep it real. Okay. Yep, no doubt. Bro. And that that's it, man. That authenticity, you know, and that's what I've been noticing, Vince. Like, again, I took a long hiatus from social and me coming back. I noticed that the authenticity is what the people love. The authenticity gets the engagement and things of that sort. So you saying that like, yo, we're authentic. That just lets me know, okay, I know what kind of content they're going to be putting out. They give you the raw nitty gritty, you know, show you the back end, show you the front end of this real life that they live in. And I'm sure that's going to be a hit, man. So we definitely will stay I tuned. I think that's the um, beauty with YouTube yeah. more than anything else, because yeah. like all these other platforms are a short form. You're curate. Right. Yeah, YouTube, exactly. You can actually show people what you do without filters or I mean, anything yep. like that and, and yep. good stuff. But before we go, man, I had three questions. Ralph and I like to ask every guest, which hopefully should help people with stuff the first one would be you meet a new entrepreneur what's the first piece of advice you give them yeah like a new so like a new young entrepreneur comes up to you right now and recognizes you what's the first piece of advice you give them okay, okay. perfect cool now second is since you are in the digital space what is a digital resource that helps you greatly right now Instagram is the platform that I, I, I see the most like income okay. from right now. But I will say that YouTube, again, going back to that consistency, YouTube okay. is it, bro. Okay. YouTube okay. is it. Okay. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. And so it just, it, no, sorry. so one thing that I learned is that in order for, for you to consider you mm -hmm. and, and put you out there, you got to be consistent. 
okay. because that's it's a business know. at the end of the day. So yeah. if you're not posting consistently, they're not going to put you out there. To the if customer. you don't show up to work, your employer doesn't pay you. <laughs> right. It's a, simple as that. Yep. That's so that, literally it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. So last one is what advice would you give to a new father or husband? A uh, father or a uh, husband. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. It's one word. Patience. Facts. I like that. I, I literally patience. just made a whole yeah, video about patience, patience cuz I I am not the most patient person and all these things are teaching yeah. me patience. Hearing it from people like you here, I yeah, mean, and, and in the world that I'm trying to be in, I'm constantly having to learn and remind myself of patience. So, really appreciate the reminder. It's almost like everything's aligning cuz I made a video yeah. about it yesterday. You just said it to me and it's a constant yeah, reminder that I have to be patient with the thing, but appreciate it, mm -hmm. man. So, I mean, this exactly, has been man. very, very good. We got a lot yeah. of insight, especially into the. No, go ahead, go ahead, man, go ahead. I, I do want to say some. I I want to congratulate y'all. Y'all have an amazing platform here. Thanks. Thank spreading you. there. There's so many platforms out there just spreading bigotry and spreading bogusness. And I feel like, like I said, remember what I said about planning good and getting good out. It may take longer than what you think and you want. But because you have such a dope foundation, yeah. bruh, once that flower eventually, what you call it, blooms, yeah. yep. blooms, it's just going to be, man, the stars, brother. Man, I appreciate it, man. Definitely, Thank you man. very, very much. We'll claim that, we man. Appreciate it, Ralph. Send us home, no. man. Send us home, brother. Yeah, Sounds man. Good. For, for, Sounds good. For everyone listening in, best believe of this isn't the last events that you see on this platform. Uh, Vince, I'm coming to Atlanta, man. We're definitely going to shoot some content. I'm going to try to get you guys a day in the life hey, of for sure. Vince. So yeah, exactly, man. And, and we're really going to ride around. So I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you for this. For everyone listening, you guys got some great game. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to make make sure to comment and leave us some feedback on whatever platform you're listening on. Make sure to let them know that Family Man Building the Brand is giving you the content that you need. So once again, this is Rafael Say, Cecil Williams, Vince Morales. Thanks much. It's been Family Man Building the Brand. Thanks, man. Appreciate it.